what is the best smartwatch or sports watch under $250 according to systematic testing. Today we'll use data and data science to figure that out. I rewrote my whole code base to give you the best heart rate trackers under $250 for your rides, your runs or whatever sport you do. And we will also see what brands under $250 are the best at sleep stage tracking. Finally, we'll briefly discuss the GPS tracking performance and what to look out for in terms of GPS. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now today we'll focus mostly on recent or relatively recent testing that I did on about 26 different smartwatches and sports watches whose current price point puts them between $100 and $150. Now I'll exclude devices under $100 since that's a separate category and a separate video. So there will be a separate video for that price category and there will also be two more videos. One for watches between $250 and $500 and for really expensive ones over $500. But as I said, today we won't be focusing on the absolute cheapest devices but at generally affordable devices between $100 and $250. And I think this price point is perfect for those that take their sports and health seriously but that don't want to pay a premium for their device. So let's get started and let's start with the heart rate tracking performance. Now regular viewers will be familiar with this overview but let me quickly show you what you see here. So along the horizontal axis is the correlation with the reference device. Now the reference is a polar H10 ECG chest strap. Chest straps are the most reliable way of measuring your heart rate and the Polar H10 is used in many scientific studies. So we'll compare the heart rate as measured by these devices to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And the higher this correlation value, the better the agreement. And on the vertical axis, so this on the left, right here, I ordered the watches from worst to best based on that value. And this is an overview for one of the easiest exercises for different smartwatches to track indoor cycling, also called spinning. So the further to the top right, the better the agreement, and we can clearly see some really good performers and also some performers that are not so good. So overall, any generation Apple Watch will do really well. All of these have a really high correlation for indoor cycling. Also, Huawei devices are quite good. So we have, for instance, the Huawei Watch Fit 4 Pro, which actually looks a lot like an Apple Watch and does really well. The same goes, for instance, for the Huawei Watch GT6 Pro. So some Huawei devices and Apple Watches are doing really well. Of course, these are older generation Apple Watches like the Apple Watch Series 8, Series 9, the Apple Watch SE, but also the Apple AirPods Pro 3. So these are not smart watches. These are things you wear in your ear. I actually have them right here. And I really like them for heart rate tracking. You do need to get a good fit, which sometimes is a struggle for me, but they do really well for tracking your heart rate and they're relatively affordable in that sense. Of course, Apple watches and Apple products work well on iOS, but not on Android. Huawei does also work well on Android and iOS. So there you can use it for both systems. Though in America, you cannot always get them at the moment. Luckily, also the Pixel Watch 3 is a really good heart rate tracker and it did really well. And the 41 millimeter version I could find for a good price, but even the larger 45 is usually not too expensive and at least close to that $250 mark. So the Pixel Watch is also a good choice in this category. Then there's also the normal version of the Huawei Watch Fit 4, so the non-pro version, which is even cheaper. And I would generally only focus on devices with a correlation of 0.9, preferably 0.95 or higher. Higher. But in terms of Garmin ecosystem, the Garmin Foreigner 165 still did decently on me, so I can still recommend it. And also the Coros Paste 3 did really well. Though my retesting of the Coros Paste 3 wasn't quite as good, and I cannot really explain why it did better in my initial test than my later test. But generally, I really like Coros devices, and that includes the Coros Paste 3. And since the Coros Paste 4 will be out by the time that you see this video, probably you can get an even better deal on the Coros Paste 3. Unfortunately, I couldn't get in touch with Coros, and they couldn't send me a Paste 4. So I couldn't test it yet. Hopefully I can buy one soon and test it out. But any device from the Garmin Foreigner 165 up, I would recommend for indoor cycling in this sort of price category. But let's now take a look at an exercise which is generally much harder for devices running. And here we have a similar overview as we were just looking at, but now for running, again, in the price category, $100 to $250. And we see Apple watches are still some of the top performers, so I can really recommend them. 
Also, the Pixel Watch 3 is a really recommended device, and I really like it, so I can recommend that as well. So Pixel Watches and Apple Watches are some of the best out there. We again have the Huawei Watch Fits, also doing really well, both the Pro and non-Pro version. The Coral Space 3 did well, but again, better in my original test than in my retesting. The Apple AirPods Pro 3 actually struggled a bit more because of that issue with the fit for me. They didn't always do quite as well. The PowerBeast Pro 2 are actually quite close to it. Those are also in-ear devices that measure your heart rate. And the Polar Loop actually didn't do that bad either. Now I'm actually retesting the Polar Loop now both on my biceps and I'm also going to do some retesting on the wrist. But Polar generally gets mixed reviews when it comes to heart rate tracking. And we actually also see the Garmin 40165 did a quite good job. So for me the top recommendations here are different Apple watches, Pixel watches, the Huawei Watch Fit 4 models, the Coral Space 3 and the 40165. And if you want, you can go a bit more expensive and also get the Huawei Watch GT6 Pro. I think for one vendor, it had a quite decent price, but that might not be a true price. It might be more appropriate in a higher price category. So I'll actually recheck that for my review for devices over $250 and then it might end up in there. But overall, these are the rankings for running. Next, let's take a look at the rankings for cycling outside, which is generally also not the easiest for many of these devices. So let's take a look. And here we have the results for biking outside. Now I should actually make a correction. I think my price scraper actually made a mistake and this should be the normal Huawei Watch GT6 at this price point. The GT6 Pro and GT6 mostly perform the same. So you can sort of take the GT6 Pro as a proxy for the GT6 here because they have the same sensor set and everything. But if you're going to get it under $250, it's going to be the Huawei Watch GT6 and not the GT6 Pro. If I remember correctly, the normal GT6 also did well for cycling outside. You can actually find that review up here. But generally, I actually like the form factor of the Huawei Watch Fit 4 Pro or the Huawei Watch Fit 4. Both of these also did well for cycling outside. And I like the looks of those a lot more than those of the GT6 series myself. They're a little bit more understated, a little bit more like Apple watches. And I really like that design. Apple watches are again also doing really well for cycling outside. And the same is true for the Pixel Watch 3. So whether you get an Apple Watch Series 8, Series 9 refurbished, for instance, or an Apple Watch Series 6, all of those will do well. But the same, of course, is also true for the Apple Watch SE, for instance. Whether you get the Apple Watch SE 2025 or 2022, all of these will do rather well. I actually have to retest the Apple Watch SE 2025 but it still has the same sensor as the SE 2022 so it should give the same performance. For cycling outside some of the sport watches like the Pace 3 both in the original testing and retesting and also the 40165 do struggle a lot more especially on me. Now most of this testing was with commuting where there's a lot of tension on my arm. Maybe in terms of road biking they would do a little bit better but still cycling outside seems to be something that both Garmin and Corals do struggle with on me. So for that, definitely Pixel watches and Apple watches are better. Though Apple watches sometimes have a moment of dropout where they stop detecting your heart rate. So keep that in mind. But the heart rate that they do provide is very good. Now, generally Galaxy watches don't do amazing on me. They're sort of mid-tier devices, definitely worse than Pixel watches, especially the Pixel Watch 3 and 4 just did really well on me. Again, here we have the Galaxy Watch 7 not doing great, but not the worst I've ever seen. But if we then move back to, for instance, spinning or indoor cycling, we can definitely see that the Galaxy Watch isn't doing quite as well as, for instance, the Pixel Watch is doing right here. So generally, on me at least, Galaxy Watches are not doing quite as well as Pixel devices from Google or Apple Watches. So in terms of the big three for smartwatches, so Apple, Samsung and Google, I think Google and Apple are definitely outperforming Samsung still. Now, I didn't really discuss some of the worst performing devices in this category which are some older Fitbit devices by now, so the Fitbit Sense 2 and the Fitbit Versa 4, and also older Amazfit devices. New Amazfit devices are actually really good, but the older generations aren't quite as good. So they really made a switch somewhere, I think after the T-Rex 3 maybe released, there was a point when all of a sudden they really jumped up in terms of performance. And you will actually see some of them in the sub 100 euro category, where Amazfit is actually quite good, 
but the older Amesa devices just weren't quite as good. Now there's one category remaining for heart rate tracking and that's weightlifting. So let's take a look. So here we have the results for weightlifting. Now generally for weightlifting, I recommend Jux. Just use a chest strap. That's the most reliable way of measuring your heart rate under most circumstances and especially for weightlifting because there's so much tension on your arm, it's very hard for a smartwatch to accurately track your heart rate. But if you really want to track your heart rate during weightlifting, basically Apple watches are the best thing out there, but they will have a lot of dropouts, a lot of moments where they just stop detecting your heart rate. So any value you do get from your Apple watch is reliable, but there will be missing peaks sometimes. The Powerbeats Pro 2 actually did well on me. So these are basically just headphones in your ear that measure your heart rate, they do really well. And also the Huawei Watch Fit 4 and 4 Pro weren't that bad and also the Pixel watches weren't doing that poorly. But generally in the gym when you're doing upper body, it's just very hard to track your heart rate. Okay, so those were the results for heart rate tracking where we clearly see some winners and some losers. And at this price point between $100 and $250, you can actually get some quite decent watches already. They won't be the top of the line for each brand, but they might be older generations or sort of lower tier devices, but these are still quite good and you don't always need the most expensive device to get good heart rate tracking. But what about sleep stage tracking? Well, let's take a look and here I'm mostly gonna focus on the different brands and not specific models. So I'm gonna focus on the brand and then point out a few models there that work well, just because every brand basically has the same sleep stage tracking in every device. So it actually doesn't matter too much which one you get. Now, before getting to that, running this channel next to my full-time job as a scientist is neither easy or cheap. I have to pay my editor, Alex, for instance. I also buy most devices myself, like this Epix 2 Pro from Garmin, for instance. So if you wanna support, there's multiple ways of doing that. The most easy way of doing that is if you make any purchase, use one of my affiliate links down below. And if you make any purchase at all on Amazon, just click my general Amazon affiliate link first. If you make that your way of going to Amazon from now on, it won't cost you any extra and you're supporting the channel at the same time. Several people have done it and I really appreciate it. If you really wanna go all the way, you can bookmark it, which is often Command or Control D. And then if you use that as your way of going to Amazon, it's really a big help to me. And it really helps me generate some extra income. The most direct way of supporting is actually by by becoming a YouTube member, which is linked up here, which gives you early access to some of my videos like this one right here. And there's a bunch of extra affiliate links in the description below as well that give you the best discount possible. But let's get back to the sleep stage tracking performance of the devices between $100 and $250. And I actually wanna start by looking at results from scientific literature, where I went through every paper I could find in science and put the results in this overview plot right here, where again, the best performing devices are to the top right. Now I colored them by different brands and these are often older devices, but many of the brands still use the exact same sleep stage tracking algorithms in their newer devices. And I'm also gonna show you my results, which do include all of the new devices that are out there. Now I just wanted to show you this to show you what differences there are between brands. So again, the further to the top right devices are, the better is their agreement with the reference. Now the reference in most cases here is polysomnography, which is basically the most scientifically developed way of measuring your sleep stages. And we can clearly see differences. So the best brands out there at the moment are different Fitbit and Google devices. So these results are still based on their old sleep stage tracking and the newer devices are doing even better. So this includes Pixel watches and Fitbit devices. The Aura Ring is doing really well, but this falls outside of our price category for today. The same is true for the Eight Sleep Pod, which does really well, but it's also really expensive. If you do want to get it, it's really outside of this price range, but I'll put the affiliate link in the description below. Finally, there's also Apple Watches, which are doing rather well, and the Whoop Strap. So in this overview, the top brands, I would say, are Aura, Eight Sleep, Fitbit, slash Google, and the Whoop Strap. And other devices, especially sports watches and some Chinese brands are not doing quite as well. These include Polar, Garmin, Xiaomi, and Huawei. All of these are really not that good, honestly. And Samsung and Withings are somewhat in the middle of devices. Withings actually does quite an okay job, but not quite top tier, so I would say second tier. But let's actually look at my results. So you can see many more brands and also specific devices. And here we have that overview based on my testing. Now this includes devices of many price categories, but I wanna point out those that I think are doing really well and are within that $100 to $250 category. So again, the same top devices are popping up as in scientific literature. So eight sleep, Apple, Pixel slash Google. We also have the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap. All of these are doing rather well. 
but out of these only the older Pixel Watch 3 right here and the Apple Watch Series 9 or 8 are really in the correct price category. Of course also the Apple Watch Series 6. The question is are you still able to get this older one and do you want to get it because the battery is quite old at this point so I would recommend for instance an Apple Watch Series 8 or 9 or maybe an Apple Watch SE, either the older or the newer version, and also the Pixel Watch 3. I think the differences between the Pixel Watch 3 and 4 in terms of health tracking really are negligible. It's more the kind of AI systems that they integrate into their newer watches that are the major difference. So in that regard, the top sleep stage trackers are really Apple and Pixel, and they're just doing really well. Of course, the battery life isn't amazing for these devices, they're not actual sports watches to the same degree where the battery life is that long, but they're still very solid devices in terms of data quality. And when again, we see that Garmin is somewhere in the middle of all devices. So we have, for instance, the Garmin 4 and a 165 that falls within our price category. It's really in the middle. It's not terrible, but also not great. In general, Garmin is still pretty decent at deep sleep tracking, but it's REM sleep that they really struggle with. And it goes for all these Garmin devices here in the middle. And I do have to say Huawei is even a bit worse in my testing than Garmin. We have, for instance, the Huawei Watch GT6, which falls within our price category, but also the Huawei Watch Fit 4 Pro and the Huawei Watch Fit 4 as well. So it's right next to it. Here we have the Huawei Watch Fit 4. So in general, these are doing even a little bit worse. So within that price category of $100 to $250, I really only recommend the Pixel Watch 3 and different Apple devices. But it really depends on how important sleep stage tracking is for you. If you just want to know a bit about your deep sleep and your total time in bed, then the Coral Space 3 and especially the Garmin 4165 is still good enough. Okay, so the sleep stage results are pretty clear. You have limited options in this price range, but if you really care about your sleep stages, then there's just two brands that stand out, Apple and Google slash Pixel with the Pixel Watch 3 and a somewhat older generation Apple Watch. Now, as I said, this isn't important for everyone. If you just wanna know your total time in bed or maybe just your deep sleep, then Garmin devices are likely also good enough. Now talking about Garmin, the final thing I want to talk about is GPS tracking performance. Now GPS tracking can be quite important if you want to know for instance your speed, your pace, your total distance traveled and for that sports watches really stand out. And I think this is the exact category where the older Pixel Watch 3 or older generation Apple watches will still struggle. So if it's GPS tracking that you care about and you want to track your pace during your runs or your speed during your bike rides like I like to ride and I also like to run. By the way, if you want the best running plans out there, get the Runner app. You can try it out for a two week free trial up here and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. But okay, back to the results for GPS tracking performance. There I would recommend the sports watch, especially if you're gonna do long runs or long rides. For those longer efforts with good GPS tracking, you're likely gonna wanna get a dedicated sports watch unless you're willing to invest more and get the new or Pixel Watch 4, which is supposed to have better GPS tracking. It's not amazing yet, but definitely better than the older one or an Apple Watch Ultra 3, for instance, but that's not within this price category. And I think here is where, for instance, the Garmin 4 and a 165 or the Coral Space 3 will be able to give you better performance than the Pixel Watch and the Apple Watch in this price category. So everything is really a bit nuanced. It really depends on what your focus is and what is important to you. I, for instance, really care also about my health. And in that regard, Apple and Google are really standing a bit out. They have good heart rate tracking performance and good sleep stage tracking. Both of these are important to me. Though, of course, there the GPS tracking is a bit limited. So if this is something you really care about, then I would get the Garmin 4165 or the Coral Space 3. Then I would just add a chest strap in that case and still have accurate heart rate tracking, but also that battery life and in addition, good GPS tracking. So there's no one size fits all. It's really what is important to you and what you care about. These are the results. I just try to share the data as I have it. I don't filter it in any unfair way. I just present the data and show it to you and you can make your decision. Now, if you do end up getting 
thing, an Apple Watch, a Pixel Watch, a Garmin 4165, a Coral Space 3, or maybe the newer Pace 4, if they ever send it to me. Or maybe you're actually looking to upgrade and getting an Apple Watch Ultra 3, or you wanna get yourself a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an Eight Sleep Pod, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter. Even something as small as decaf coffee or the new Meta Ray-Bans. You wanna support the channel and get the best discount possible at the same time, use one of my affiliate links in the description below. Now, given that you watched this video, I think you will enjoy this video on the best sleep stage trackers or this video on the H-Sleep Pod.